Audio Truth, Truth, Truth in, in Audio Technology. Technology. Welcome to my review of the ELAC S10 EQ Sub. And I would like to warn you that this will be very biased. I have owned the Sub for almost two years now, and it has been great. I really like it. So this is more of a revealing of the subwoofer as to how it's built, uh, what the parts are, and what they look like. This speaker was designed by Andrew Jones, the chief engineer for ELAC. Andrew Jones has also worked for many famous speaker companies. I became aware of Andrew Jones through his work with Pioneer. He worked on Pioneer uh, high-end speakers and very expensive speakers, and they asked him to build speakers that would compete on the low end. And he built some amazing speakers. And I have those speakers and use them as my monitors now. I'll be talking about those in another video. This subwoofer was designed by Andrew Jones for ELAC and is another product of his attention to detail for quality at the low end or low priced uh, section of hi-fi. With his products, you almost always get a lot of bang for the buck. I looked on the internet before I put this video together for images of the interior of the uh, ELAC S10 EQ sub and unfortunately did not find a lot of pictures at all. And I was kind of impressed by that because usually you can find uh, images of things, but perhaps not too many people were interested in that, but I was. And so uh, recently I was playing with uh, my subwoofer position in my listening room and decided to take it apart and take a bunch of pictures and show you guys. These pictures are all photoshopped carefully to look nice because Photoshop is something I also enjoy along with audio. I just wanted them to look enjoyable to people. So they do not represent the exact way my subwoofer looks. There's some scuff marks and things like that on it over two years of use. But the subwoofer has been fantastic. So why don't we get into the review? The subwoofer is about 13 inches square. The base extension uh, system is a passive radiator rather than a port, which you'll see in the pictures later. The vinyl covering is given to scuffing, I've noticed, but that's not really a concern of mine. But it's a thick vinyl covering, so it's pretty nice. The subwoofer has an automatic EQ system, and if you go to Amazon and happen to look the woofer up, you can see screenshots of the app that controls the woofer. The woofer has no controls on the back. Everything is controlled through the app and the automatic subwoofer EQ system attempts to equalize the listening position for optimal bass response. And I found it to be somewhat successful. There's other considerations when you're playing music inside of a room. So the first thing you have to do to take the woofer apart to see what's inside is to remove the plastic ring that surrounds the metal cover for the speaker. So in attempting to remove the plastic cover, I first started to remove it from the top side, but realized I was going to kind of hurt the woofer cabinet. So I thought, well, maybe I should do it from the inside. So I got this dental tool and I just carefully pried it and it just kind of started to work its way out. So here's the ring after being removed and it has just legs that pressure fit into the holes that hold it firmly into the subwoofer. So here is the plastic ring flipped. You can see the sturdy legs that push into the subwoofer cabinet and the foam that is placed around the ring to keep it from rattling. Here we see the woofer with the plastic ring removed, and you can see the holes where the plastic ring fits in and the screws that hold on the metal cover. The screws appear to be a number two, and every screw I ran into taking apart the subwoofer was this same screw. Here's the metal cover for the woofer, and it's fairly uh, strong metal. 
This is a picture of the metal cover flipped over on top of the subwoofer. And so we're looking directly at the back of the metal cover for the woofer. And around the edge there, you see foam. Here's a picture of the metal cover back close up. And you can see the foam, and it's pretty high quality. And notice that it covers everything, the whole entire surface of what contacts the cabinet of the subwoofer. That's important because that means it won't rattle. Here I'm pointing at the cabinet surface where I removed the metal ring and the surface I'm touching is actual wood. So that's the level at which the metal cover screws into. And here is the 10 inch subwoofer itself. And when you touch it and push on it, it feels like a very well built speaker. Notice that there are eight screws holding it into the wood, and that's indicative of making sure that a speaker is secured properly. Notice here that the surround on the subwoofer is made of uh, thick rubber, and I'm pinching it here, and it's, it's quite thick. The good thing about rubber is it's very long-lasting, and I've had other speakers that have foam surrounds instead of rubber surrounds like this, and invariably, after a time, the foam will degrade and fall apart and need to be replaced. Here we have the subwoofer, and uh, I really like the way the speaker looks. It's got uh, good wires, and the attachment points are solid, and the cone material is very tough, along with the rubber surround we were talking about. The magnet is very large. It's like five and a half inches across by, I think, a couple, uh, two and a half inches or more. The voice coil is really big, and you can see there, right at the bottom of the basket, uh, the screen in front of them are vents for the spider which locates the cone in the top of the speaker that allows pressure to equalize when the speaker's moving the circles are there for the same reason that older race cars used to use cutouts on metal to save weight but retain stiffness so if you've seen different kinds of speakers they do it in different ways my guess is that this method spreads out the stiffness more smoothly over the surface of the metal than other ways of doing it for a speaker. But I'm not sure on that. But I do like the way it looks. It's pretty cool. Here we see the woofer with the connection point. See how the wire comes in and it's sort of held on to the connector and then goes underneath and then is soldered to the connector. That's a great way of holding the wire there. The spider is really big, if you can kind of look in the speaker there. It's really quite tough, and we'll see that better in the passive radiator, which shows the spider much better. And the spider on the passive radiator is very similar to the speaker. Here we see the passive radiator for the S10EQ. Downward firing passive radiator. Those are the legs, and they lift up the subwoofer so that the sound can radiate from the passive radiator. The passive radiator is a device that allows you to extend the low end response of a cabinet and it is weighted in such a way that when the woofer reaches a certain frequency that it will start resonating and that does several things that we won't go into but basically extends the bass response of uh, any speaker in a given cabinet. Uh, another way to do this is a port and there are arguments for and against uh, either design. I can tell from the construction of this passive radiator that it was very well done, and I will show you some pictures of that. When I took the passive radiator out, I could get a look at the vinyl, and it's tough, and is also used apparently as a gasket for the passive radiator. It's a hard material and very tear resistant. So this is the passive radiator out of the woofer box, you'll notice that the passive radiator looks just like the woofer. I believe that they use the same construction for the cone and the basket of the passive radiator that they did similar to the woofer. The main thing about a passive radiator that's important is that it needs to be sympathetic or resonate at certain frequencies based on the compliance of the, the cone that we see here and also 
the mass of the cone or the mass of the system that is vibrating. That way you can set it to vibrate or resonate at the appropriate frequency to accentuate the low frequencies that you would want to accentuate. Here we see the back of the passive radiator and you'll notice that there's no magnet structure, there's no wires like you would have in a speaker. There is only the, the spider, a weight, the silver part, and underneath that, facing down, is the cone. And that is the object that is set to resonate uh, because of its design within a, a certain range of frequencies. Here we see the weight of the passive radiator that's very finely made, and surrounding that is the spider which locates the cone, which we can't see, which is facing down of the passive radiator. If you try to move this with your hand, it's very resistant, very, it feels very strong. But when the 10 inch sub woofer is at a certain low frequency, this will start to resonate and then accentuate the low frequency output of the subwoofer. Now we are looking directly into the cabinet of the subwoofer with the subwoofer out. I have the wires running through the middle hole there just to hold them in place. They wouldn't be there with the speaker in because the speaker magnet needs to sit within that wood bracing piece that goes across from side to side on the subwoofer. There's also a piece of wood, if you notice, at the bottom of the hole there appears to be a piece of wood going across, and that's wide. And I think that the magnet actually, that helps to hold some of the weight of the magnet as well. Behind that, you'll notice the amplifier, and this is the amplifier that uses an app on your phone to control everything, and we'll take a look at that amplifier. So here's the amplifier view on the back of the subwoofer. And you'll notice an interesting thing about it. There are no controls. And that's because all of the controls are within the app for the phone. Some people have said that they have had trouble connecting in the past. I have not heard much about that after the first times I've heard that. I have had it for almost two years and I have had uh, no problems connecting to it and controlling it with my phone. And that's been very nice actually. It has a power connection for a power cord. It has a low frequency in RCA jack. It has uh, a reset button in case I guess it gets locked up. I've never had to use it. And it has a service port that's USB and I have never investigated that, but I imagine that is for updating the Bluetooth software for the subwoofer. I've never updated it and it's, it's, it's run fine. But I, of course, would recommend to update it in general. This is the amplifier of the S10 EQ subwoofer and it is a bash design, and I understand that's a patented or a proprietary design for subwoofer amplifiers, and I don't know much about it, but the amplifier is feather light and yet produces 200 watts RMS within the range that it services. The build quality is much the same as modern electronics. The soldering is good and the components seem quite good. And you'll notice up in the left that the part where you plug in the power on the other side is very well held in place with hot glue and also other types of adhesives. I believe that the Bluetooth board is on the left there. Here's another picture of the amplifier. And I just thought I'd get a different colorful angle of some of the components that are in the amplifier and they're soldered well and uh, I'm not much of an electronics guy. I know some of these components and I've done some electronics work, but you know, looking at this, I felt like it looks pretty good. I'm guessing, but I think this board represents the Bluetooth functionality for the amplifier. I think I've seen other Bluetooth devices with the silver box like that one on the upper right. This is a close up of the what I believe to be the Bluetooth, uh, perhaps antenna or module. The company is Sonovox, and it appears that uh, ELAC worked with Sonovox to uh, produce the software, probably, and, and the perhaps Bluetooth uh, technology that they use in the subwoofer. Sonovox, as far as some of their capabilities, is iOS and Android app development and audio and electronics uh, engineering. And you can look that up at sonovox.com capabilities. 
Here's the final picture of the amplifier board, and it's a close-up so we can see some of the quality in the construction of the board. It appears to be up to general standards, and that's where the speaker leads come in. That's it for my review of the ELAC S10 EQ subwoofer. I hope you've enjoyed looking at the insides of it and getting my opinion about it. Like I said, I've had it for two years. It performs very well. It goes down to, you know, just under 30 hertz in my space, which is 10 by 15 by 8. And it served me very well. Without a hitch, no problems at all. And I hope that this interests you and you might investigate ELAC and some of the speakers that they make. So give my video a like and subscribe to the channel. And we'll be back very soon with more videos about Audio Truth. Audio Truth. Truth in Audio Technology.